Vill du lära dig svenska? Jag skulle tro det eftersom du klickade på den här videon. Hello, jag heter Leoni and I have been learning Swedish for a couple of years now. So my interest in the Swedish language began I would say in 2012 when Sweden won the Eurovision Song Contest with Lorraine and her song Euphoria. Great song, highly recommend you check it out. I also started watching YouTubers and would pick up some basic phrases like Jag älskade. And of course, one of my ex-boyfriends was from Sweden, so I would have conversations with him and his friends in Swedish. And then I had a couple of years where I didn't touch anything even remotely Swedish until last year where I had the thought that it would be a waste to, you know, have this basic knowledge of Swedish but not really go anywhere further with it. So I started taking actual Swedish classes and so I am back on my Swedish language learning journey. So today I thought that I would share some of my tips and tricks and resources for those of you who are thinking about learning Swedish or are learning Swedish. But yes, most of my Swedish language learning has predominantly been self-taught and only recently have I started taking classes. So these tips and tricks will be a mishmash of both. Så, so, Leoni, hur lära dig du svenska? I will tell you. For me, I feel like music is the catalyst to wanting to learn a new language and it's the easiest way to immerse yourself without feeling overwhelmed because music in itself is a universal language. Um, it doesn't matter what language they're singing in, people can still emote and relate to the song. So when you listen to music, there's a lot of phrases and common words and expressions that you'll pick up. In Swedish music, it's usually words like charlek or hjarta or drömmar or varlden. So I feel like it's a good way as a beginner to immerse yourself in the language and pick up those basic words. I have a Spotify playlist called Min Favorit Svensk Musik. So if you would like to explore and discover some new Swedish artists, I'll have the link to that playlist in the description. Otherwise, some of my favorite Swedish musicians include Danny Sociedo, Victor Lexell, who I think is like one of my favorites of all time, Kalle Johansson, Darin, Molly Sandén. There's heaps. There is a thriving Swedish musical community. Watching Swedish YouTubers and Swedish TV series. Okay, so I don't actually watch a lot of Swedish YouTubers anymore, but when I did, I used to regularly watch Clara Henry, who I don't think she's making videos anymore, but she's got a great backlog of videos. But it's good to listen to people speaking Swedish conversationally. So watching YouTubers is a really great way, watching vloggers. A couple of other Swedish YouTubers are my good friend, the Swedish lad. He makes a few videos based around the Swedish language, so that's really helpful. YouTube vlogging communities, you know how they work. If you find one vlogger, you'll find many more. Swedish TV series are also a great way to immerse yourself in the Swedish language and pick up on Swedish conversation. And they're really good if you're into Nordic noir. The Swedes do crime and thriller shows so well, so if you're into that, definitely check out some of the Swedish TV series. You can watch shows on SVT Play and I'm sure if you're technologically savvy you can use a VPN to unlock more TV series. If you're in Australia, SBS On Demand have some really great Nordic Noir and Netflix also has a few. A few of my favorite include Akta Mani Shore which I think is one of my favorite series of all time. Unfortunately I don't know where you can watch it anymore. There is Midnight Sol or The Midnight Sun, which is actually in French and Swedish. So if you're learning both languages, this is a really good series for you to watch. And if you're also interested in learning more about Swedish culture, Swedish Sami culture specifically, this is a really good series. Störst av allt or Quicksand, uh, which is on Netflix, is also really good. It touches on some very deep, serious topics though. Caliphate, also a very heavy TV show, touches on terrorist topics, so it is a bit of a heavy watch. But if you're looking for something lighthearted, Bonus Familian is on Netflix, it is comedic, um, it's got Petra Mede, so you know if you love her, 
it's a good laugh. But again, once you start watching one Swedish TV series, you'll be recommended many others. Having someone you can speak Swedish with. This is a very difficult one, I know, especially in our day and age, where it's difficult to, number one, make friends, let alone, number two, make international friends. But I think it's really important to find someone that you can speak Swedish with so that you get that practical experience of actually talking to someone, even if it's just another friend who's also learning Swedish. And I'm sure there are plenty of apps and stuff where you can find people to do language exchange with. So where there is a will, there is a way. children's books are a really great way to learn basic vocabulary things like you know body parts or numbers or animals things like that so I get a lot of my Swedish books on the book depository they have an option to filter books by language which is really helpful and they also deliver worldwide which is even more helpful so no matter where you are in the world they will deliver to you hopefully um, and sometimes I might even find some old school children's books on Etsy. And if you find that you are progressing quite fast and you don't want to just learn vocabulary, you want to learn more about sentence structure and things like that, I would recommend upgrading to comics, non-fiction books, poetry, and eventually finding a book that you really love that's translated into Swedish. writing notes in Swedish. So I do this with every language I learn and I always love writing random stuff in notebooks and notepads, but I find that it really helps, especially because I am the type of person that learns through writing and repetition. So for example, if I'm tired, I will start doodling in my notepad and I'll be like, jag är så trött. Or if I'm hungry, jag är så hungrig. And then I'll write random words that I like, like kärna, or genomkännlig, or hjärta, or mitt hjärta blöde. Buy yourself a dedicated notebook where all you can do is write in that particular language. I think that's really helpful. So there are a lot of language learning apps out there. I know that Duolingo and Lingapp both have options to learn Swedish. I tend to use these language learning apps as revision rather than learning from it, if that makes sense, and kind of as a way to test myself and my knowledge. But you know, everyone learns in a different way. Maybe you need a language learning app to get started. But for me, I definitely feel like it's more of a revision tool. Swedish classes. Okay, if you have the monetary means and there is a Swedish class in your area or online that you can take, I highly recommend taking it. Obviously, being in a class where you're learning Swedish from a teacher, it's more structured and you'll get homework given to you, so you're kind of like forced to learn Swedish, I suppose. And I definitely found a huge difference from the time when I was teaching myself Swedish to having a teacher teach me Swedish. You find that you progress a lot faster and also you have people to speak Swedish with and you have someone speaking Swedish at you so you have to really understand what they're saying. So if you have the means to sign up for an actual Swedish class, highly recommend. Swedish textbooks. So according to my Swedish teacher, the textbook that we're using in our class is a textbook that immigrants use when they move to Sweden. And it's called Riv Start by Natur and Kultur. For beginners, it's the A1 and A2 textbook. Everything in this textbook is entirely Swedish. The questions are in Swedish, there is no English translation, so it's definitely, I think, a bit harder if you're coming into it brand new. But you know, it's very well structured, it's thematic, and yeah, I think personally for me, it really helped that I already had a basic understanding of the Swedish language. But other than that, it's a really good textbook. Anyways, those were my tips and tricks for learning Swedish. Hopefully they help those of you out there who are thinking about learning Swedish or taking up a new language. I definitely think Swedish is an easier language to learn, having 
you know, I learnt French in the past. It's definitely easier than French. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of similar words in English. And generally, I feel like it's a very fun language to learn. So definitely give it a go. Once you learn Swedish, I have noticed that it's easier to pick up Norwegian as well. If you are also learning Swedish and you have some tips or tricks or very useful resources that you would like to share, please leave them in the comments below. And yeah, um, vi ses nästa gång på min nästa video. Uh, tack för maten. Haven't said that in a while. That felt strange. Så konstigt. Okay. Hej då. Hej hej.